So yield books, unfortunately, um, it's not a protocol. Um, doesn't have a token. There's no DAO. There's nothing to ape, ape into. So if you're here for that, then um, go somewhere else. Um, so it's just a piece of infrastructure um, to to make development uh, better and um, get better yields. So let's um, go through it. We're going to uh, have a look at what the user benefits are. Um, what the benefits for uh, developers are. Uh, we'll have a look at the um, contract stack and uh, we're going to end with some examples. So the user benefits. Um, so one of the main things of, of Yieldbox is um, uh, a way to get yield, so to get into strategies. So it makes it much easier to get into strategies. Um, Currently, if you want to get in, into a strategy, let's say Yearn, you have to go to the Yearn website. If you want to go to some other strategy, you have to go to another website. And you have to figure out how these websites work, and they all have clunky UIs, and uh, it's very unclear how to use it. And you also have to approve your tokens to each of these websites. So with Yieldbox, you just approve your tokens to the Yieldbox, and then you can assign it to any strategy you want, and you can move between strategies. Um, so it's all about capital efficiency. So um, what does that mean? Um, let's say I have some ETH. Um, and you know, one thing I want to do with that ETH, maybe I want to put it in a lending platform, like here, and then uh, borrow some USD seed against it. Um, but also, I kind of want to use that same ETH to put into a strategy and, and you know, make some yield from it. Um, so what I actually want to do is I want to take my ETH, put it in a strategy, and then I get some sort of strategy token. Then I want to put that into the lending platform and then borrow some USDC from it. Or even crazier, I might then want to take that USDC, swap it back to ETH, and loop it again, and then I get a little more um, leverage that way. Unfortunately, these days, this is normally the situation you run into. Um, whatever token the strategy gives you is not really, um, uh, uh, cannot be used in, in, the, um, in, in the lending platform because that just wants you know, straight ETH. So with Yieldbox, um, basically every Yieldbox asset is, uh, is a token uh, plus a strategy or no strategy. And that creates an, uh, an asset. And uh, while that's sort of like a, a, a token, uh, an asset, it, it, it behaves mostly still like ETH. So you can then take that. And then if a lending pl platform is actually built uh, on top of Yieldbox, you can then just borrow USDC against it. So now you kind of, um, you can have your cake and eat it, right? So you get the, the uh, yield from uh, the strategy, but also the benefit of the protocol. Um, another benefit for users is simpler approvals. Um, I, I bet uh, most of you spend a lot of time doing approvals. Every time you have a new protocol or a new token, you have to approve, approve, approve. So with Yieldbox, you approve your tokens once to the Yieldbox. And when you have a new protocol you want to use uh, all your tokens in, you just approve that, that protocol once, and then it has access to all your tokens. So now we're going to look at um, the benefits for developers. So every con almost every protocol out there it has to deal with tokens. It, it has to deal with EVE and Rapid. It has to deal with ERC-20 tokens, um, and that's for most protocols where it stops, it doesn't support also NFTs, uh, ERC-721. It doesn't uh, normally support ERC-1155 tokens. Um, so with Yieldbox, without having to do any work as a developer, you get support for all of these without having to do any work. And we'll look at some examples about that later. Um, another thing that most protocols can't deal with is rebasing tokens. Um, you normally would have to wrap them, and then you'd have to use a, a, a wrapped version of it in your protocol. Um, that whole problem goes away as well. Um, as discussed, the capital efficiency. So if you build the protocol um, by itself, it has a certain yield, a certain benefit to users. If you build it on Yieldbox, it's the same protocol, but extra yield for any tokens that are sort of sitting still. They can be assigned to strategies by the user. Um, it also has a built-in token factory. Um, we'll look at that. 
And overall, and we'll see that in the examples, you just get smaller, simpler, and, and less exploitable contracts. Um, so this is the, uh, uh, these are all the sort of different tokens. So the way it works is so you can take any token, whether that's a, a native token, an ERC-20, uh, some rebasing token, uh, an NFT, uh, an 1155, you can combine that with either no strategy or any strategy, uh, and it's completely permissionless, so anyone can write strategies and, and uh, people can choose those. And that sort of get wraps up, wrapped up into a yield, boy, yield box asset. And those are kind of um, uniform, so as a protocol, you do not have to worry about like how that asset works or, or um, what that actually is. Um, so this is the token factory I talked about. Um, often what you see is, um, let's say, Uniswap V2. Um, every time there's a new pair, you have to um, deploy an entire contract that is a complete ERC-20 token that has all the swapping functionality, repeated, repeated, repeated. Um, there's no need for that. Uh, with Yieldbox, you can simply have a simple, uh, a single contract, and whenever there's a new pair, you just call create token, and you'll just get an asset ID that is just a simple ERC-1155 uh, token. Um, and then you can mint, you can transfer the ownership, and you can renounce the ownership. So this is just the basic functionality you will need in, in most contracts. And let's have a quick look at the contract stack. So the core of the yield box is uh, a standard ERC uh, 1155 implementation. Um, so it's a little small, but that's just your, your basic functions that are in there. Um, and then it gets wrapped into an asset register. So um, that's kind of where you register and say, hey, I have uh, this NFT, this token number, uh, I want to combine it with this strategy, give me an asset ID for that. And then from then on, it, you can just use it as an asset or, or whether it's like an, an ERC-20 token or whatever you want to put in there. Um, and then that gets wrapped into the um, native token factory. So that's the part where um, you can issue new tokens um, that your protocol might need. Um, it also includes the boring factory. Um, that's a, a, a very simple um, clone creator, so you can get a master contract. You can create any number of clones from that. And it also keeps track of, of the clones. Uh, um, and one of the cool things about that is with the approvals, if you approve a certain master contract, you've automatically approved all the clones. Um, so in, in certain uh, contracts, this will be, will be very helpful in that sense. Um, And then around that is the, the yield box contract um, that includes boring batchable. Um, it's just a very simple uh, function that you can now call any any function in, in the yield box. Um, you can batch it so you can uh, call 10 of them at the same time in a single transaction. So it's just some gas optimization there. Um, and here's some of the functions that, that are in yield box. It's a way to deposit assets, to withdraw them. Um, there's a whole bunch of different transfer functions depending on how you're transferring that are gas optimized. Um, so whether you're transferring a whole bunch of assets from the same user to the same user, or from one user you transfer to like 20 users, there can be gas optimizations in that code. Um, so that's, that's what this does. Uh, let's look at some examples. So this is a very simple um, escrow contract. So basically, um, I can make an offer and say, um, I have this asset, this quantity. If you give me this other asset of this other quantity, let's swap it. Um, I'll just figure it would be a bit small. So this is, a, this is just the core part of that. So the make just a, pushes the offer into an array. It doesn't actually swap anything. It just kind of puts it out there. Um, and then, as, you know, providing you still have the assets in Bento Box, if someone else wants to take that offer, they call the take with the offer ID. Um, then you just ask Yield Box, okay, give me what I wanted, and then I will return uh, uh, 
the thing that, that, that was on offer, and then it closes it. And you can obviously cancel as well. So if you are the owner of, of that offer, you can say, actually, I don't want that offer out there anymore. Um, so one thing to note here is that the contract SO, it's not like is ERC20 or is something. This is the entire contract. If you deploy this on, uh, on the Etherscan, this will literally be all, all code you will see, plus the interface for Yieldbox, um, which is a couple of lines. Um, so this, to deploy this, this whole thing, maybe a couple of hundred K in gas, will be very cheap. Um, this contract here is not just like an escrow service for, for, for just ERC-20 tokens. This is also basically a limit order uh, system for native tokens, for ERC-20 tokens, for ERC-1155 tokens. It's also a marketplace um, for NFTs because you can put up an NFT for offer and then uh, someone can, can, can buy that. Um, this is also a way to swap NFTs. So this little contract here um, can do a, a whole lot of things. And as you can see, you don't have to deal with um, uh, native tokens, wrapping ETH. Um, so this takes a whole lot of complexity out of it. And less complexity means less bugs, means getting wrecked less. I had another little example here which is a tokenizer. So let's say you have an NFT and you want to tokenize it. Um, so this is the entire contract again. Um, I'll just get to the core of it. So you uh, deposit your, your NFT. Um, you say um, the source has had, you know, it can be something else, but NFT makes most sense. You put one in, um, then uh, here you can see how the create token works. So then it, it creates a tokenized version of that, uh, of that NFT. Um, it gives it a name and a symbol, 18 decimals. Um, then the transfer brings in the NFT because that's what you've got to give. And in return, it means you the um, tokenized version, the tokenized uh, tokens. Um, and then you can turn around and say, okay, now I've got all these tokens, I want to withdraw the NFT. And um, you can simply burn those tokens and it will trans automatically transfer this, uh, this NFT back, back to you. Um, when Yieldbox, um, I'm still in development. Um, uh, basically, the, most of the code's written and this is the GitHub for it, so you can, you can check it out. Um, I'm now in the process of doing a lot of examples to see, you know, if I'm missing certain um, helper functions of things to make sure it really uh, provides for all the different ways people want to use it. Um, also, very keen on any feedback anyone has. If you, if you look at it, uh, that'd be great. I'll leave this up for, oh, actually it's on here too. Um, yeah, so if you want to reach out, um, that's my Twitter, my Discord, um, the GitHub is on there. I'm always keen on feedback, so um, I have some time left, so any questions? There's something uh, I didn't understand. You mentioned the uh, uh, yield-bearing tokens cannot be uh, deposited to get uh, um, uh, to borrow money, but we do have, by, maybe you mean, like just to clarify, maybe it's within the, the whole system? Yeah, this yeah. part. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so so we can take Kian tokens and deposit it into a spell platform and get MEM. Uh, uh, sure, sure. It's not like it's never possible, but you can't put them into half. It's like it has to be specific. You know, they, it, it's um, it, it's a little bit harder because each platform that will want to support it, they would have to then understand exactly what a Yearn uh, ETH token is and also how to get the price of that. Right. Whereas in in your books, if you know the price of uh, ETH, then you can just accept uh, urine ETH and half ETH and uh, compound ETH, um, and then so it's it's much easier. So if you build a lending platform on top of uh, Yieldbox, it will be much easier to just accept a whole long list of, of different collaterals with strategies. So standardizing the whole. 
process across it's, the... It's a lot more standardized and it's a, it, mm. it's, it behaves a lot more like the original ETH uh, in a sense than um, uh, when it's really locked into a strategy. Um, and it's also a lot like um, the way the sample strategies work, it's a lot cheaper to, unless you pull in big amounts or push in big amounts, if you do small amounts, there's like a buffer. So there's almost no cost to getting into a strategy. Okay. Um, but that's really up to the person who writes the strategy, but like the samples that I'm making uh, work like that. Yeah. Thank you so much. No worries. Hey, Boring. That's a bit. <laughs> Very cool stuff. Uh, so my question is, uh, what about licensing? Uh, are you thinking about you know releasing this uh, through a different license from Bantubox? And second, um, how do you think about the trade-off of keeping all these assets within one single smart contract, which is basically this gigantic um, you know vault holding everything uh, from a security perspective instead of isolated uh, you know pools or tokens? Okay, the first one, first one is simple. Um, Almost every part of it will be MIT licensed. Um, just the core yield box uh, is unlicensed simply because there should be only one on, e on each chain and, and I will deploy them. Um, because there's no point having more than one. It's, uh, as I said, there's no token or anything. There's nothing to gain from having more than one of them. Um, but and if someone wants to work on it or make it even much cooler or whatever, like just reach out. Like a, it's just to, you know, I just didn't license it because I don't want like 10 different yield boxes out there. That, that would just be silly. Yeah. Um, the second part. Um, yeah, my question was about. Uh, it looks like there is a you know significant trade-offs in holding all these assets into a single place compared to have isolated pools. And uh, I know this is kind of becoming a little bit. Uh, um, yeah, more accepted within the community after Maker, after Balancer, after Bentobox. But like, do you think there is uh, something to be concerned in having this single smart contract holding all these different assets compared to many different isolated pools? Um, I think for this one, not so much. And also, like, a lot of tokens will actually not be held inside the Bento box because if you assign it to a strategy, it's actually the strategy that gets the tokens because right. they are going to be dealing with it. Right. Um, so it will be uh, uh, Bento box is true. It's like most of it is sitting in there. With yield box, it will be more spread out. So only if you don't assign a strategy, it will actually end up in the Bento box. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Sure. All right. Give a hand for Boring Crypto.